So in this video, we're going to go ahead and cover the gameplay of Rivet Heads. So as you can see, we have the board set up. Um, as in the last video, we have the main area set up, and we have the player board set up. Um, this is closer than they would normally be uh, during the course of an actual game, but I wanted to have both on camera so that we could cover how cards flow from one area to another and have it all be in the same shot to better help you understand it. So, we're going to go ahead and start with the white player here, who uh, is closest to the cycle decks. Uh, we will always go from left to right in the order of the cards uh, as they go away from the cycle deck. So we're going to go ahead and start here. White is going to take their prism, and they are going to go ahead and select a card in the second row that they would like to draft. So they are all in on red, so they're going to go ahead and grab this double red here. This will go off to their player board, uh, which is not on camera. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just move this off the camera, and then we'll get to the next piece. So now... Black. Black has this card. They're next. So they're going to go ahead and select that one. And now this is going to go into slot one of their player board area. And now they're going to go ahead and trigger all of the effects on this card before they move to the next uh, prism, because they are next in turn order again. White will have done this off camera, but we're going to focus on the black player specifically for this um, example. So they're going to go ahead and spend one credit, that is the yellow resource, in order to gain claws, which is the green resource. Then they're going to go ahead and gain a credit and gain a credit. Once they've triggered all three of these, the card in slot three is going to move over here to a discard pile, and the other two cards will go ahead and slide down making an opening in slot one conveniently for the very next card. Black's going to go ahead and place theirs on this double credit card. This is going to come in here. And now, uh, once again, we're going to go ahead and trigger this in order, starting with the card on the left. So we'll spend one credit, gain one green and one red. Spend another credit to gain one green. And then gain one credit. And then that credit will fall off. These two will slide down. Uh, now we will go ahead and have white take their turn. They're uh, going to go ahead and go to this double green here. And this is going to go off to their player board. The card that wasn't selected, this boost card, is going to go ahead and go to a discard pile. There will be a discard pile for all boost cards and a discard pile for all cycle cards. Uh, some boost cards will interact with those discard piles, but we'll uh, give you some examples of that later on in this video. Now, since we've gone through all of the cards up here, we're going to go ahead and slide this row up. And we're going to go ahead and deal out a new second row. So, just like in the setup, we're going to go ahead and grab four of these. Uh, we'll go ahead and put 11... 10, 8, and 6. All right, cool. And then one boost card from the top of the deck. So now as uh, the black player, we get to go next because, again, we're closest to the cycle deck. Uh, in this case, we're going to go all the way over to this boost card for purple because on our uh, squad card, we have a purple requirement that we care about. So we're going to go after that. Then we're also going to bring this down and run it through our engine. So ultimately we're going to spend three credits, taking us from uh, six down to three. And then we're going to go ahead and gain three greens and two reds. Three greens, two reds, and then this green will fall off to our discard pile. These two will move over here. Now we'll go ahead and do this one here, which is going to replenish our money stores, and we'll go ahead and grab another one of these. So we'll gain two credits, bring us back up to five, and then we will spend two credits to gain two reds and two greens, and then this will fall off. Now, 
I'm saving some time by executing everything um, as a total, but should anything ever get to zero and me not be able to spend it, it is important to note that you will always trigger all of card one, all of card two, all of card three. I'm just trying to save some time to move through the demo a little bit faster here. So, white will go ahead and move theirs. They're going to want some money. This will go to their assembly line. They're going to go ahead and move here. They're going to go here. That's going to go to their assembly line. This will be discarded. We're going to slide this up. And yet again, we're going to go ahead and deal out a row. In this case, it's the remaining cards. So we've got a four. Or sorry, a two, a four, 14, and a 12. And then we're going to go ahead and add a boost, which is this one right here. Excellent. So now... Black, again, is going to take their turn. Uh, they're going to go ahead and grab this orange and put this down here. So, again, they'll spend one to gain a red and a green. And then they will gain two. And then they will spend one to gain a red and a green. And then this will get discarded. All right. Now, white will take their two cards they're still all in on red, still all in on red. These will go off. This card will go to the discard pile. This card will come down here, and we want more green. So now we're going to go ahead and gain a purple. Spend a yellow to gain another red and a green. And then gain two yellow back. This will fall off. And now... We're done with cycle one. Once all of the cards in cycle one are complete, you'll just go ahead and continue the game now using cards from the cycle two deck. So again, you'll grab four cards in this instance, and you'll go ahead and put them in order. So 24, 25, 33, 39, then you will add a boost card. And now, I'm going to show you one of the uh, mechanisms in the game that has to do with scoring. So you'll notice that all of the first cycle cards have no, don't have this colored strip at the bottom. All of the boost cards do, and then all of the cards from the uh, later rounds, um, cycle two and cycle three, will have this colored strip. And this is specifically has to do with scoring. So, on your squad card, as I showed earlier, you have certain requirements that you're trying to meet. And you'll try to meet these first. So, in this case, I need to have 9 green and 6 purple to score this fixer, 9 blue to score this runner, and five, or sorry, 6 of the orange uh, DNA resource to score this mercenary. And depending on how many of those I complete, I will earn a certain amount of points at the end of the game. Well... After I've done that, one of the things that I can do is I can score points based on hitting a re getting a resource to 20, 25, or 30, or I will score points based on the majority of each particular augment. So having the most of an augment will also score me victory points. So the way that push works is it will kind of upgrade how far you are along on the track. Let's go through this round, and then in the next round, I'll give you a specific example of that. So, black is going to go here, and we are going to want to push for green, because we're likely to have the majority there. So, I'm going to go to this card, even though it looks like one I wouldn't otherwise necessarily want. Um, white is going to go here. They're having money problems. White is going to go here. They're looking for some higher level resources. So these are going to go away. Let me go ahead and run this engine real quick. Minus one, plus one, and then plus one, and then minus one, plus one, plus one. Gone. Okay. So now on this next round... Well, well, first, let's go ahead and do this one, and we'll go here. So, this one we're going to go ahead and gain our orange. 
We're going to go ahead and convert one of these into yet another green. We're going to gain a purple. This will fall off. These will slide down. All right. So now, on this round, I'm going to go ahead and put a card in as a push. So let's deal out the next four cards. In this case, 23, 21, 40, 29, and here. All right, excellent. So we're going to go ahead and this is going to be discarded. Here, I am going to go ahead and go down to here. Now, here, and we'll show off attaching. Uh, and instead of playing it upright so that I trigger the actions on this, I am instead going to go ahead and play it upside down so that the color band is at the top. The reason I would want to do this is, first of all, I will immediately gain either a red or a green. In this case, I'm going to take a green, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, and then, this will not do anything else while it is in my assembly line. Once it falls off my assembly line, it will actually go to a separate pile, a storage pile. And then at the end of the game, if the resource that it's scoring, or that it's dealing with, hits a certain threshold, then it will bump that resource up to the next yellow boxed score number. So in this case, the red and green resources need to get to 15, which I just did. So at the end of the game, after we've checked my squad, this would bump up immediately to 20. As if I had 20 of that resource. So putting them through your assembly line with the colored strip at the top puts them into a separate discard pile that helps you when scoring comes around. All it does during the game, however, is just give you a single resource, which isn't much, but sometimes, as in this case, can be exactly what you need to hit the threshold for that push to be worth it. As it is now, we're going to go ahead and do the rest of this so that we can then show you... This goes out, these slide down, so that we can show you attaching here. So white is going to go ahead and... Uh, they don't care about green, so they're going to offload some green. I am going to go to... I don't want to decimate my green. I do need blue. This is not as good of a return. Um, but I'm already here, so I'm going to gamble. So I'm instead going to go here. And then this will come to me. And then this... We'll go to the white player, and they're going to go here. And then I'm going to go ahead and trigger this. So I'll spend one red to go ahead and gain two blue. And then I get nothing for this again. And then I gain one more orange resource. This falls off. These slide down. These slide up. And again, now we move on to the next round. And we're going to show you attaching and how attaching works. So in this case, we'll go ahead and put these 26, 27, 30, 34. And then we'll go ahead and add this. Ooh, cool. Straight up blue. White gets to go first, however, and white is very happy to see that blue. White is now going to go ahead and take another one of these. I'm now going to go ahead and go to grab this, put this in here, and I will gain three money. Then I will spend one red to gain two more blue. Then this will fall off into my storage pile. This will be discarded, except it won't, because this right here says, take the card that was not drafted and attach this card. So what will happen is we will actually take both of these cards, and we will put both of them in our slot one so that we can see the resource at the top here. And what this will do is it means that now, in addition to being able to activate this function, 
I can gain purple. In this case, however, I'm actually going to play this one because I don't want to get rid of my green as a push for blue because I'm going to try and get blue here to 10. And, and we'll go, these are functionally identical, so we'll go there. So here now, we'll go ahead and gain one green or red resource. I'm going to go ahead and gain another green. We're going to go ahead and gain three more of the yellow resource credits. Then we're going to go ahead and spend a red to get two more blue. These are going to slide down. These are going to slide up. And then we will continue in that fashion. The rest of the game kind of works the same way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cover some additional boost cards and how they work. The rest of the cards in this main deck will give you resources or resource conversions, as you would expect. In cycle three, you will have resource conversions giving you more access to orange, finally, the uh, nanites DNA resource. But then the boost cards are present from the very beginning in the game, and they have some very powerful abilities. So you've seen, uh, take the card that was not drafted and attach this card here. I've shown you how that one works. Uh, so this one, swap this card with one from your discard pile and activate that card. So you would add it to your thing, activate it, and then you would choose one of the cards that you've already played this game in your discard pile and put it in this spot and then discard this card in its place. There's also one that is swap this card with a card from the boost discard pile. So in this case, the discard pile over here, and then you could activate that. You could even use this to grab the one that lets you grab something from your discard pile and then replace it. So you can daisy chain the effects of boost cards. As far as other boost cards go, you've seen the ones that just straight up give you a resource. Uh, those exist. Some more swaps, some more attaches, some big money cards. Uh, credits after the first cycle are somewhat hard to come by, so these can be lifesavers if you find yourself running low on credits. Um, again, swaps, attaches, and resource generation. So let's go ahead and cover that specific example that I just brought up. What happens if you want to activate something and you can't? Um, so let's say that instead of this scenario, I actually had uh, no purple. Uh, no, let's go with no green. Let's pretend green is on zero in this scenario. And I have this card in my assembly line. Without any green to activate it, I can't gain what is on the other side, unfortunately. Uh, so what I have to do at that point, since all of these are mandatory, I have to execute them once they're in my assembly line. So you want to make sure that you're only putting things in there that you want to do. If you put in something that you don't want to do, you can put it in as a push, in which case you can get one resource and then use it as a push, whether that's useful or not. Or you can choose to put it into your assembly line face down, in which case it won't do anything except get spit out to your discard pile. You can never flip it back face up uh, in this scenario. So if, for example, I had, I put this in here and I had a green, I used it to convert to purple, and then on the next turn... These slid down, and I had this here, and now I don't have a green. I can't flip it over to its push side. Instead, I would have to flip it over to the back and put it through without it executing any more, without it gaining me any more resources. So, don't, try not to put yourself in that scenario. Sometimes, though, just gaining one or two activations from a card can be exactly what you need to hit one of your thresholds at the bottom, or can be uh, exactly what you need to get the resources for the activation of another card that's more important to you. Uh, so the final thing we're going to cover in this video is a little bit more on scoring. 
So again, as I said, you'll have this scorecard at the end of the game where you have the option of scoring all three of these um, or any combination of these three. If you score all three, you'll get 10 points. If you score two of them, you'll get six points. If you score one of them, you'll get three points. And again, these are checked before pushes or any other scoring is done. So once you're done activating any pushes from any cards in your storage, then you'll award uh, points to the players who have majorities in each of the upgrade resources, not credits. So in this case, for green and red, uh, the claws and arms, you would the first place player would get three, then second place two, third place one. In the blue and purple resources, first place six, second place four, third place three, and then finally, the person who has the most in the orange resource of nanites would get ten points, second place seven, third place three. If two players tie for majority, then both of them get the points. That is the full value of points listed for the placement that they tied at. The final thing you'll score is any resources that make it to the 20, 25, or 30 spot will score you 1, 2, or 3 points collectively. Once you've gathered up the points from all of your uh, different areas, your squad card, the resource majorities, and any bonus points you gain from uh, having large quantities of resources, you'll total all those points up and whoever has the highest score will win the game. And that's a summary of the gameplay of Rivet Heads.